it's not about just watching a product. For me, it's about more than that. I, I like a lot of detail and I like taking my time with it. And, you know, I want to make sure I continue to push those limits as to what I can make and uh, make something that is me, that is different, something that stands out. You know, if you see it on your page, you're gonna say, oh, that's Algero Lore. So in the makeup industry, uh, when a new product comes out, people start posting swatches uh, of the colors, you know, the eyeshadows, the lipsticks, to see how they look on skin. So that's a swatch. Now with swatch art, you basically do the same thing, but in in a artistic form. My Instagram page is a good definition of what swatch art is. <laughs> so back in 2016, when Gabon D Beauty released the Serpentina palette, that was really exciting for me because it had uh, such a fun theme, you know, the, the ancient Egypt theme, and that really speaks to me. I'm, you know, I love anything that has to do with that. That along with Kat Von D herself being a tattoo artist, I really wanted to play with that a little bit, you know, pay homage to her and do little tattoos for each of the colors of the palette. So that's basically how I got started and it was really exciting because it made me look at makeup in a whole different way. I, I just love the whole process from thinking about the palette and you know what to make for each of the shades or just for the palette itself and then creating those shapes and photographing it and you know coming up with not just the swatches themselves but also creating a photograph, creating an image that represented this palette. So I kind of continued on from there and have been trying to do the same thing for everything else since then. Thinking about a piece, you know, coming up with ideas, sometimes it's very instant. Sometimes, you know, like I kind of think about it a little bit more, you know, I, um, I let it boil a little bit. I let it simmer. Sometimes I make some sketches on paper, sometimes go directly on my arm. It depends, you know? And then once I start swatching, like actually like on my arm, that can take anywhere from a couple of hours to over a day. Granted, it's not like, when I say a day, it doesn't mean like 24 hours of a day. You know, like I'll start it earlier in the day or like halfway through the day and then I, had to sleep, you know, go to sleep with some pieces on me that are that haven't been finished. Granted, I don't really get a lot of rest during that time because I'm I'm just worried. Like even though I'm sleeping, I'm I'm really just trying to make sure I don't mess up whatever it is that I'm working on. And that's also a reason why most of the times I um, try and use a primer. This is something that people ask me. Um, you know, if I use a wet brush or, you know, what I do to make my swatches look the way that they look. And actually I never use a wet brush. Uh, I do, however, you know, especially with eyeshadows or with a powder product, I do use a primer, but it's a dry primer. You know, it, it just sets dry. I don't try and give anything an unfair advantage. Another thing is, if you look at my captions, I usually address a lot of these things. I try and give a mini review of the products that I swatch. So if I thought that a specific shade was particularly difficult or I had to layer it a few times, um, I usually mention that. Now, I've done swatches on my neck, my back, my knee, <laughs> 
my legs, my chest, my shoulders, my sides. Yeah, basically everywhere. With some of those, you really have to make sure you include enough context, which is hard if you want to get really close up to the swatch and also if you're not trying to show more than necessary. On one of them, when I swatched the metal matte palette from KVD, I actually got a lot of questions on whether my side was a foot. <laughs> I remember going through the comments some people would ask is that a foot like what is that I don't I don't understand that and then some people would reply like oh that's her side and some people would start bickering back and forth about it and it was actually quite entertaining I thought that there was enough context there but I guess for some people there wasn't <laughs> Lately, I've actually been very inspired by organic shapes, uh, geometry, mandalas, uh, you know, that kind of a thing. So I'm really trying to explore that a little bit more and just kind of create my own thing as opposed to even just anything that has to do with the product itself, just kind of represent it in my own very abstract way. So for the Wet n Wild uh, Zodiac collection, I wanted to find a way to represent this collection uh, in both a direct way, but you know, in a different manner. I didn't want to go with just the symbols of each of the signs of the Zodiac. I wanted to go a little bit deeper, a little bit more creative. You know, something else that I, I really love and that inspires me are mandalas. So I couldn't go with something so direct. I couldn't make a whole mandala on my arm. So what I did was I basically made a slice of a mandala on my arm. So uh, an example of something that's been very directly inspired is KBD's lipstick uh, dagger. You know, for that one I made a dagger, but I tried to give it my own you know, touch, and so I designed this dagger myself. Um, and I sort of did it with this uh, goth slash Victorian feel to it. I still pulled from the brand itself. You know, I tried to give it that feel from the designs of the Sainted Sinner perfume, for example, or even the little details on the ELL lipsticks on the tubes. Or sometimes it's something that is not even directly connected. For example, with the Anastasia Beverly Hills Modern Renaissance Palette. From that, I just, you know, I got this feeling from this palette that I kind of wanted to do a very artistic piece. For that, I sort of paid homage to Vermeer's painting, um, The Girl with the Pearl Earring. Know, it's a renaissance piece and I thought you know giving it the twist of being modern renaissance by painting it with this palette you know it's not a direct uh, copy of the original it's not like I didn't paint the scarf for example in blue you know my scarf is painted with the main colors from the palette which are reds and oranges you know the warms that make this palette It's not always very direct. It just depends on how I get inspired by, by that specific piece. So yeah, sometimes I kind of start with the sketch. You know, I'll just start drawing something like directly on my arm. An example of that would be the ribbon that I did for the Violet Voss rainbow palette. I just started sketching that ribbon on my arm and then I needed to start thinking what to swatch on it. I think uh, they work really well together, you know, kind of creating this rainbow flash ribbon of color. That was my first ribbon and it kind of inspired me to continue playing with that movement. You know, it's just so flowy and it really makes me think of color in the same way. I feel like the two go together really well. You know, it's like the movement of color and how they interact with one another. Um, there are also some pieces that I've like, some ideas that I've sketched out that I eventually want to do for swatches, but you know, I just haven't found the right product for them yet. 
And uh, I guess that means I just have to go shopping. I mean, it's totally for the swatch. Only. It's for the ribbon. It's for the arts. It's for work, okay? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> All right. You know, as I said, this kind of started as a as the idea of like making tattoos with makeup, and it started being really fun when people actually started saying to me, like, "Oh my gosh, this would be great as a tattoo," or "I would love to get this as a tattoo." And I mean, I've had people literally ask me if they can get one of my swatches, one of my designs as a tattoo, and I mean, honestly, that is probably the highest form of flattery I could get. I mean, someone wanting to get something that I made tattooed on them. That's that's such a compliment. I, at the end of the day, whether I do a swatch, you know, or I make a swatch that is very literally representing the palette or something more abstract and something, you know, more driven by how I feel about it. I just, I, try and continue to push myself to make something different, you know, something that is unique to me, you know, because um, that's what it's all about, you know, continuing to grow in, in, in this. And yeah, I'm excited to see what 2019 has, has in store. I'm, I'm excited to see new palettes, new makeup, new, new everything and see what else, you know, continue to push myself to make something fun and different.